you made it to the tea fields. Nice one. As you can see, the damage can be pretty bad when certain species become overabundant. That's why pest control is a responsibility everybody shares in Australia, even non-hunters. But for that, you'll need your varmint rifle. It's waiting for you. It's the perfect calibre to hunt small to medium animals. The only thing we'll ask is that you take a small target practice test. We want to test our hired hunter's skills and competence. Even pests need to be shot ethically. a beaut. You'll see, it also does the job well. Now, how about a bit of practice? Let's start off nice and easy. See that soft drink can? Shoot it and start getting a feel for your new weapon.
let's up the ante a little. Try to shoot that target. Still using the rifle, of course. Sure. <laughs> Thank you.
not bad. So, what do you reckon? To me, it's practical, reliable, and lightweight. It may not be the most common calibre for pest hunting, not even in Australia, but it's my personal favourite. Sometimes it's nice to just focus on yourself, your posture, your breathing, your aim. So, if you're game, you're welcome to keep honing your skills. The best hunters are the humble ones, if you ask me. Now that that's settled, feel free to do what you do best. Here's a bunch of bounty assignments for you, but no rush. We'll leave it up to you how you want to plan your hunts. Thanks for your help, mate. North of the river, it's mostly my property. I can't wait to show you the sanctuary. Wait, Robbo, I've got an idea. How about we take our mate on a little detour? We could introduce you to a fun tidbit of Aussie culture. A folk song called Waltzing Matilda. Ah, yeah. Good idea. Perfect. What have you got in mind, Soph? A billabong. Right. I know which one. Check out that location I've marked. If you're a bit of a history nerd like me, it'll be worth your time. Billabong? <laughs> Sorry, we should have led with that. That's what we call a kind of U-shaped lake or waterhole. Right, we have Aussie terms and phrases for everything, as you've noticed. But believe me, we're already toning it down for you. So, what's your plan, Soph? Oh, please tell me you're not going to sing. Sing? Oh, oh, no way. But I'll gladly talk about the song and what it means. Yeah, I feel better. I wouldn't want to relive another 2012 karaoke debacle. Made it to the billabong? Nice. Of course, that's not the one that inspired the original writer of the song. <clears throat> to me, Waltzing Matilda will always be that one bloody song Soph was always singing in the back of her mum's car. If you want, you can keep walking along the billabong. It's really pretty. A bit further away, there's one gorgeous spot you should check out. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. It drove you nuts. I used to have this illustrated children's book based on that song when I was a kid. Yeah, you went through a phase when you were slightly obsessed with a song. Let's put it that way. Originally, it's a traditional song from the early 20th century, a so-called bush ballad. That's got to be one of my favourite places in all of the Emerald Coast. Used to go there with Mum all the time before she became ill. It's full of old Aussie words that no one understands anymore. Well, that's my take on it. Back to the song. Swagmen carried all their belongings in a sort of bundle, which they nicknamed a Matilda. 
It tells the story of an itinerant worker, a.k.a. a swagman, who travels across the country looking for work. In the song, he stops to take shelter under a eucalyptus tree and starts boiling tea. He makes camp near a billabong, takes a break and drinks tea. That's how the song starts. Wait, so what's the deal with a jump buck? Isn't the man capturing a sheep? Anyway, it ended up becoming very popular and beloved by most Aussies. Everyone has covered it. Exactly. He tells the sheep, you'll come a-waltzing Matilda with me, which means you'll travel with me. You can even hear it at sports events. If you ask me, it's pretty much seen as Australia's unofficial national anthem. Oh, right. And towards the end, the lyrics get really weird, don't they? With the police and everything. The police come to arrest him for stealing the sheep. So in order to escape them and not be caught alive, just one eucalyptus tree close to the water. Yeah, that's the tree I was talking about. My favourite place. You're cool, but I wouldn't sleep under the stars unless I had to. Yeah, he throws himself in the billabong and dies. And at the end, his ghost comes back to sing the chorus. What did you find? Rubbish. How much? What's your point, Robbo? So much for the history and culture chat, I reckon. Ugh. Back to reality. Lucky you went there. God knows how long that rubbish would have stayed there. Would it be okay if you'd have collected all? Last month, we found an area by the river littered with disposable vapes. That's the new thing. Those things are bloody toxic. They leak all kinds of chemicals in the soil and water. All rubbish can be a major hazard to wildlife anyway. <sighs> you don't want to know what condition some animals are in when I find them. You know what, mate? We're bloody grateful for... What? He got bitten. By a spider. Oh, mate. All right. Don't panic. What did the spider look like? Was it a big black spider or a red-back spider? No? Are you absolutely sure? Good. In any case, we need to see a doctor just to be on the safe side. Sit down and don't move. I'm coming to get you. So, how are you feeling? Can you describe your symptoms? Okay. Mostly nausea and dizziness. No sweating, swelling or burning sensation then? Yeah, it's maybe one of the milder spider bites. Let us know right away if anything changes, OK? And remember, keep calm. We'll keep in touch the whole time. G'day, mate. How you going today? Great. Thank goodness you're feeling better. According to the doc, you just had some kind of mild allergic reaction. But she said you have nothing to be worried about. Well, that's a side of Australia we hoped you wouldn't experience. You're at my wildlife sanctuary. Make yourself at home. Feel free to look around. You sure you're feeling better? Okay. Well, if so, I could use a fresh pair of eyes to take some good photos of the sanctuary. Uh, let me just send you what kind of photos I need. There. You should see the details on your hunter, mate. I appreciate it, mate. But take it easy, though. It's not nice to get a scare like that. We had a couple of not-so-great years financially. Right now, it's just me and Lizzie working full-time. Plus some seasonal staff working part-time. 
And our photos on the website and social media really old. Hopefully, with new photos, we'll be picked up by parenting websites, influencers, or schools. That stuff matters these days. Yeah, we even got salties. It wasn't pretty. But now, he's one hungry bloke. I could always use help to gather more food for him, when you get the chance. So, how many school visits have you got lined up, Robbo? Oh, I, I don't know. Uh, five or six next week. Not bad. She'll be right, mate. Oh, I hope so. Oh, one of the visits will be our old kindy. Oh, that's cute. Good luck with all the screaming kids, mate. Oh, I've got your photos. Thanks. Let me take a look. Nice one. They look awesome. Oh, I'm sure that'll help us reach more people and make them excited about visiting the sanctuary. But even adults are never done learning, and all species deserve compassion and respect. As long as someone out there will listen, I'm happy. That was always what I wanted to do with my life. Hey, while you're still at Robbo's Sanctuary, don't forget to drop off the kangaroo book, you know? Just leave it on the bench near the deer pen or something. Why make such a fuss about a book? <laughs> well, since you ask, that book is a little special. That's all I'm going to say. Intriguing. Celebrating 30 years of friendship this month. I have no idea what you're talking about, Robert. Hey, mate, as a coincidence, I've also got a book for Soph. If it's all right with you, could you please take it with you before you go? I left it on the bench by the lake. You'll see the view is something else. getting this time, Robbo? More craft beer like for our 25th? I have no idea what you're talking. Oh, crikey. Well, it's been a sandbar sighting. Right, just got the notification too. Well, at least we've got an approximate location. Can you go and confirm that sighting, mate? Look for tracks, or, or even better, spot the animal yourself.
Look, Robbo, you've heard it before, but you got to find a way to let work be work, you know? I know, I know. When you care too much, that's when you're more likely to burn out. Too true. Especially when you work where you live, like you and me. Yeah. I'm trying to be more realistic now. I'm not going to save the ecosystem on my own. Sweet as. Save your energy instead and save some for your kiddo. You found tracks of sandbar deer. Jeez, I haven't seen any for a while. They're restricted in most Australian states. They shouldn't be here at all. The authorities take any sightings very seriously. And so do we. So we need to control this early before it gets out of hand. Down in Victoria, their population exploded and they caused massive damage to pretty much everything. Crops, pastures, even trees. If you spot one, you're required by law to report it within 24 hours. So that's what we're going to do. I'm already on it. Could you go to an outpost, find a computer and email me all the details? And I'll take it from there. Since you're a licensed hunter, you're allowed to shoot them too. Encouraged, even. They're not the only large deer you can find in the region. Maybe you already encountered a rusa or a red deer. All of them are introduced species and are strictly regulated. So, go ahead. They're pretty much fair game. Check if your email has all the info they'll need. Ah, looks good. I'll call the biodiversity folks to log the report right away. I gotta say, you're more than living up to your reputation as a hunter. And a tracker. Thanks for all your hard work. Bloody lucky to have a bona fide expert like you around. So maybe you might be able to help us out with this one. The other day, my missus read something in the newspaper about a saltwater crocodile causing mayhem and understandably making people nervous. It also had a map of the salty sightings. 
Maybe that article's a good place to start. Here's where you'll find it. In Australia, people will love to tell you stories about animals. The animals even get nicknames. Uh, then it becomes part of a local furphy. Yeah, nah, the stories aren't just a furphy. Well, most of the time. After all, this Stevie story started from a few bloody real incidents. Yeah, it was a couple of years ago. If you haven't already encountered one, the Saudis are more aggressive and dangerous than, say, alligators. A lot more. And sometimes you get one that's even more territorial and starts venturing outside its natural habitat, or like Stevie. You found the article? Sweet as. So where do they say the salty sightings were? Robbo's not the type to big up himself, but he's our local salty hunter, a true blue expert. Righto, gotcha. Then let's tag those areas in your hunter, mate, and go check it out. Yeah, I was the one who caught Stevie back then. That was fully sick. But now, it sounds like Stevie had a hidden son or something, and it wants to avenge his daddy. Hey, Soph, you're getting a present too, you know. Blimey, so when do I get it? Soon. Our friend here kindly agreed to drop it off next time they're at your station. That's all right. Oh, mate, thank you. Can't wait to see if you went for silly but fun or so bad it's good this year. Maybe you'll need to come up with a new category for this one. Who knows? Now that's interesting. Let me know when I'm allowed to see it then. So, do you feel ready to take on Salties? You know the drill. Prepare yourself well, make sure you have all the right gear. Not only that, but also take the time to observe the environment and study their behaviour in various situations. It took you years of learning, both theoretical and on the job, Robbo, didn't it? Yeah, too true. And I had my fair share of close calls. Even when you're an expert, Things can go bloody bad, bloody fast. But you're a pro hunter, so I know it'll come good. So good luck, mate. On you. Then try to look for any traces of a salty's presence. Could be tracks or just break your leftovers.
ver. Great. Now you're there, one way to investigate would be to look for evidence of the damage they cause. Carcasses, for instance. what I feared. It's not common for a salty to go all the way out there. Yeah, that's the work of a salty. Hmm. It's not usually their territory. They'll need to deal with this. Well, that's all we had planned to introduce you to your assignment with us. But as you can see, there's no shortage of things to do. Keep up the good work, mate. But don't pull a robo. Make sure you enjoy yourself too, okay? Speaking of which, why don't you all come over for tea this weekend? Oh, oh absolutely. Oh, that way our friend here can meet our families. We'll have a couple of coldies. We'll have a great time. Oh, I've still got a couple of your fancy craft beers in the esky, so I reckon we're covered.
You're back at Surf Station. Great. I'm sure you're aware, but don't forget about the, you know, the thing. You mean the prezi you got me for our friendship anniversary? You should have been a spy, Robbo. Ah, oh, I know. Anyway, if you don't mind, could you drop it off for us somewhere? Maybe at the bar near the counter. Thanks, mate. Thanks a lot for helping us with this. All right, Soph. I'll tell you what it is. It's a second-hand copy of a certain illustrated children's book, Waltzing Matilda. Mate, you didn't. I don't know what to say. I'm not picky. I'll accept a simple thank you, you know. My favourite book growing up. Well played, Robbo. Well played. You win. No worries, Soph. So that's two Barbies you owe me now.